Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to our celebration of the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our tabernacle flowers are donated in memory of Dawn Blank by Sharla Taylor. This Mass is being offered for Alice Davis. Our opening song is Amazing Grace, found in your worship guide. Please stand. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate with joy this Sunday of Ordinary Time, this day when we honor and remember our fathers, let us call to mind our sins to enter into this Mass with a pure heart and ask the Lord for His mercy. Let us pray, I confess, to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. deprive us of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Answer me. 
It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame has covered my face. To my own kin I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunts against you fall on me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer, for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them. Lord, in your grace, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. 
Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in the Holy Gospel, the Lord tells us to be not afraid. Do not fear. Fear no one. So, got to ask you, what are you afraid of? Spiders? Snakes? The dark? Anything like that? They've done statistics, and every time they ask, you know, what are you most afraid of? Most of the time, the number one answer is public speaking. So, we priests are fearless, you know, because we do this every day. <laughs> Not always. No, we all have these fears, and fear is a natural and good and, and human thing, right? It's a natural response to danger, to peril. That if we're in a difficult situation, if we're in a tight spot, that fight or flight comes, there's a little bit of fear so that we're more aware, where our awareness is heightened, we know what's going on, we can run if we need to, or um, we can respond as we should to some danger, to some peril. So why, how can the Lord tell us, do not be afraid? It's the most used phrase in the Bible. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. I am with you. How, how are we to overcome these common everyday fears that we have? Fear of insecurity, fear for our lives. What's the Lord trying to say to us through this? Well, certainly we all have our own personal fears, our own personal struggles. Right now, we're going through a, a group one, a communal one, with the fear of the health of our community, the fear of uh, catching or spreading a virus. We're in a dark situation. Things are scary. But it's not quite as bad as the prophet Jeremiah had it in our first reading. So let's look at, let's look at his example. Prophet Jeremiah, so he was in the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom had already been attacked by the Assyrians, and they were all hauled off into exile. The south... The Lord gave him the task to preach a message of repentance, to preach saying, unless we convert, unless we change our hearts, then we're going to be taken over, destroyed, cast into the rubble, taken as exiles too. So you would think, you know, he goes around preaching this message of repentance that he would be well received, right? Everybody who has bad news, you love to listen to that guy, right? No, even his friends, even those whom he was supposed to bring this message, rejected him pushed him away, exiled him, so that he says, I hear whisperings all around, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are watching for any misstep of mine. So the prophet Jeremiah, surrounded by fear, doesn't even have a friend in the world, but still, by the end of, of today's reading, is singing to the Lord, praising the Lord, and already trusting that he will be rescued by the Lord. This sort of great faith, this being a prophet in the midst of turmoil, that's what all of us are called to do. To put our own fears on the shelf for the good of others, for the good of our families, um, and for the good of the world. But how can we do this? Well, today's also Father's Day, right? So when you're afraid of the dark, when you're, there's a snake out in the yard, who do you run to, Right? Whose arms do you jump into? Dad, right? You run to dad and say, hey, deal with this snake. Kill this spider. You know, 
dads are to protect, to guard, to defend the family. And this is an important and, and difficult job. You have to image fatherhood for your family. And fatherhood's a tough job. You have to show the fatherhood the love of God, the mercy, the justice that God has, and be an image of that in the family. That's a pretty tall order. And so unless you have and you know the Father's love, the true and authentic Father's love for us, you won't be able to image that, to mirror that to your family. So let's talk a little bit about the Father's love and what Jesus says in the Gospel today. Jesus says, fear no one. Do not be afraid. How can he say this? It's precisely because we have a loving Father that no matter the circumstances, no matter what happens, he knows us. He's all-powerful. He cares for us. Not a sparrow falls to the ground without your father's notice. Every single one of your hairs are counted. For some dads, that's easier than for others, right? But every single one of the hairs on your head, the Lord knows. The Lord counts. He knows you so intimately well. He knows what we are struggling with. He knows before, you know, we get the news pretty quick nowadays, right? But even before we get the news, the Lord knows the situation. He knows our hearts. And he wants to be, our Father wants to be with us and accompany us through the darkness. Now, that doesn't make the darkness necessarily completely go away. That doesn't make the cross disappear. But if you have the Lord beside you, if you have your Heavenly Father pouring his grace into your life, the cross is easy to carry. The burden is sweet and light. And this fear turns into faith. We have to be careful. The opposite of fear isn't reckless abandon. It isn't, you know, let's just live fast and loose and hope everything goes well. No, that would be silly. The opposite of fear is faith. And faith includes prudence. Faith includes making sure to take necessary precautions and to do what's best for your family. But to give in to a pandemic of fear means that we don't trust that ultimately God our Father loves us he has us in the palm of his hand, and whatever cross, whatever struggle we have to go through, he's bringing about a greater good through it. So even the cross brings resurrection. And this gift, this gift of Jesus Christ, is greater than any one transgression. So we know we're fighting against fear. How do we, how do we get rid of fear? We're recognizing this perfect love. Perfect love casts out fear. The perfect love the Lord has for you, the perfect love the Father is seeking after you with, and modeling as a father, as a Christian, that perfect love to others. Going back to that original question, what's our greatest fear? The Lord only, uh, so he says, do not be afraid over and over and over again in the scriptures. But today, he does say there's one thing we need to fear. It says, fear the one, not who can just kill the body, but who can kill the body and soul in Gehenna. Gehenna is a fancy Bible term for hell. So the only thing we have to fear is losing that friendship, that relationship with the Lord. That's what we fear above all else. Even more than our own death, we fear what could separate us from Jesus. Our greatest fear has to be that we would die outside of this friendship with Christ. But all we have, we need not fear in that because all we have to do is turn to Him, turn to His mercy, seek His forgiveness, and this perfect love that He has for us can cast out all fear. So dads, I charge you again today, show this love, show this mercy in your families. Um, thank you for your love and, and for teaching us, your children. You have a difficult role. I mean, it's hard to be the image of the Father, the Heavenly Father. Um, but the Lord, if you're close to Him, will provide that grace so that you can be that instrument of mercy, that instrument of justice in your family, and with your wife, be the best of parents in raising kids. Let us all commend ourselves to that perfect love that casts out all fear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to the God who knows even the number of hairs on our head, we present him with these needs. Our response will be, hear us, O Lord. May our Holy Father Francis, Archbishop Paul, and all the clergy direct all humanity to the knowledge and belief in God. We pray. Hear us, yes, o Lord. Lord. We pray for the grace to face difficult situations with courage, knowing that you are always at our side. We pray. Hear yes, us, O Lord. Lord. For all of us at St. John the Baptist and our visitors, that sharing in the Eucharist, we may grow in unity and strength. We pray. Hear us, O Lord. Lord. Gracious Father, may your love bring courage to those persecuted for their faith or for the color of their skin. We pray. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord. Lord. For all our fathers on this Father's Day weekend, we pray. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. Lord that we may respond with compassion to the poor, the sick, the oppressed, and those lives crippled by fear, we pray. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. Lord. And for Austin Blair, who was confirmed in the Holy Spirit yesterday, we pray. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. And we pray for our deceased brothers and sisters. We pray especially for William Kennedy, brother of Jim Kennedy, Kate Ketter, wife of Don Ketter, James Cronkow, father of Rose Solomon, Julie Stoner, wife of Mark Stoner and mother of Kate, Ethan, and Jack, for Carolyn Taylor, friend of Wanda Rudy, and for Mary Rupel, father or mother of Pat Rupel. May they soon be welcomed into the joy of God's heavenly kingdom, we pray. Hear us, us, O Lord. Lord. And for those prayers offered in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and those we hold now in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Hear us, hear us, O Lord. Lord. Almighty, ever-loving God, hear and answer these needs. Guide us according to your providence. Deliver us from all evil. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing together the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, where they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, 
saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. It seems you've always been there Forever and a day I know you've always cared for me Each step along the way Traveling down the path of life The road you've shown to me Let me follow in your footsteps As a father I should be you know my every weakness, you know my every pain. When I'm cold, you give me sunshine, and thirsty, give me rain. In times when everything goes wrong, the light is growing dim. You've given me the sunrise to start the day again. 
prayer, prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. All the fathers would kindly stand for a blessing. All dads, please. Spiritual, physical, or otherwise. Thank you again for your commitment to your families, your love. You're showing the Father's love through your life. Uh, May you be richly blessed. God, our Father, in whose wisdom and love you made all things, bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Show some love for your fathers. Also, on your way out, um, you may have noticed through a generous uh, family in the parish, all of these miraculous medals have been made available. So, miraculous medals, a very old devotion, Our Lady. In France, preached, you know, spread love of my immaculate heart, spread love of of the sacred heart through the world. And these miraculous medals um, have been going around ever since. So everybody, please take one on your way out. Um, They've been known as even stopping plagues before. So they're very timely. Um, Grab one on your way out. They've been pre-blessed, yeah, pre-blessed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Faith of our fathers living still in spite of dawn and fire and sword. Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy whenever we hear that glorious word. Faith of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to Thee till death. Faith of our mother's daring faith, your work for Christ is love revealed, spreading God's word from pole to pole, making love known and freedom real. Faith of our mother's holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our sisters, brothers too, who still must bear oppression's might, Raising on high in prisons dark, the cross of Christ still burning bright. 